Hi, welcome to this video on the basics of wildlife tracking. Here I'm going to talk about what wildlife tracking is, what are some of the fundamental concepts, and how you can learn this very real-world skill. To begin with, wildlife tracking is an art and a science of looking at the evidence left behind by the passing of an animal. So much of the lives of the animals around us is hidden from our view, and tracking gives us an incredible window into their lives Tracking is an incredible tool for us to learn so much more about our wild neighbors. And it's not just about looking at footprints. It's also a tool to let us look into the relationships between predators and prey, plants and animals, and entire landscapes. But before we get into the gritty details of tracking, let's talk a little bit about how we see and what we tend to notice. For starters, I want to talk about this phenomenon in psychology known as inattentional or perceptual blindness. And this is described as a tendency for us to see what we expect to see, but struggle or fail to see what we don't expect. There's a great example of this in the studies involving the invisible gorilla. I recommend you check it out on YouTube. Okay, so more to the point. The idea is that the key to tracking is how we use our attention. And in her book On Looking, Alexandra Horowitz puts it beautifully this way, attention is the intentional, unapologetic discriminator that asks what is relevant right now and gears up to notice only that. She also mentions your own internal monologue about what you are doing in any given moment actually affects what you will see in that moment. That's pretty profound. All right, so another helpful tool is what, what's called baseline versus disturbance. This is a simple idea that in any given landscape, there's a certain degree of normalcy, of a consistent pattern to the background. So whether it's a windblown sand dune in a desert or coastal region, or a leaf covered forest floor or a vacuumed carpet, there's a certain normal pattern, an organized chaos. But when something or somebody walks through there, they create a disturbance. And that disturbance is something you can learn to see. So here's an example of that. This is a densely vegetated pond and you can see that the leaf cover is so dense it forms a thick carpet of leaves but there's also these broken lines passing through those leaves and those are actually the trails of foraging ducks here's another example of a mud covered landscape this is actually in an estuary and there are these fallen willows and everything seems to be that same mud color but if you look closely what pops out is that bright orange and red markings on the tree, which is actually the feeding sign of a beaver. And lastly, even in heavily impacted landscapes, such as construction sites with lots of heavy machinery and human traffic, you can still find animal sign. In this case, if you look really closely, there's the wheel marks from heavy machinery and plenty of footprints, but also in the middle, there's a beautiful fresh trail. Another useful tool for wildlife tracking is what's called broad to narrow focus. Some also call it the bird's eye view down to worm's eye view or the tracking funnel. So in this case, what you're doing is rather than getting down into the tiny fine details of a single track, you're starting out looking at where you are on the earth. So in this case, I'm along a large river in the Olympic Peninsula and I'm on a specific sandbar of that river and I find a long trail of paired tracks. Now I look closely at what patterns those tracks make and then I look at just a pair of those tracks and then I zoom down all the way to a single track and look at its feature. Now we're on to the next step which is clear print identification. And that is looking at the clearest most well-defined tracks you can find and looking at all their features, using those features to identify the maker of those tracks. So in this case, we can see two tracks, both with five toes, kind of longer heels and elongated toe pads. So we're looking at the shape and number of toes. We're looking at presence or absence of claws. We're looking at the overall shape of the entire foot, its width and its length. I definitely would record the measurements if you can. Also looking at any distinct patterns of pads in the feet or lack of pads, as well as the space between the toes 
and the space between the toe pads and the main pad on the foot. All of these are relevant. Of course, tracking is about a lot more than just looking at footprints. There's all sorts of other kinds of sign in the landscape left behind by passing animals. One really common one is scat. Scat can tell us about what species or group of animals was there, as well as what they've been eating. In this case, a black bear feeding on sedges. Also, many animals make burrows, and their size and placement can tell us a lot about the maker, in this case, a muskrat. And inside of dead trees and even living trees, there's often the signs of animals. This is a hairy woodpecker nesting cavity, and these are the claw marks of a climbing black bear on a red alder. Also, bird nests are another great sign of wildlife. Here's the nest of a morning dove with two eggs. Many animals, especially mammals, leave trails. Sometimes they're subtle, like these fresh wolf trails through a wet meadow, or very beaten in, like this alligator trail in Florida. Also, there's lots of different kinds of feeding sign and biting sign. Here's the feeding sign of a black-tailed deer on dandelion, and also on an Amanita mushroom. Animal remains are another great source of information for the tracker. Here's an example of that. This is an elk carcass that was fed on by gray wolves in Yellowstone. And here are the remains of an American robin, including its breasts and wing feathers and parts of its skull. Remains can also include things such as the shed skins of lizards. Here's the shed skin of a southern alligator lizard. Amphibian egg masses are another great piece of evidence for the tracker and tell us what species is present and how well they're reproducing. In this case, this is the egg mass of a red-legged frog. Also, the most common sign in the landscape is that left behind by the presence and activity of invertebrates, especially insects. Here's the huge mound of western thatching ants, and here's the shed exoskeleton called the exuviae of the dragonfly naiad, or larva. So it's fun to look for these details in the landscape, but let's not forget what it's all about, watching and understanding wildlife, and also connecting more deeply with the natural world all around us. Here's a great example of a rare opportunity that I had watching this family of red foxes over a number of years now. And I recorded this short little video of this fox playing with a volt I had just caught. Notice it's still tossing it and pouncing on it and practicing the skills of the hunt. If you watch closely, it also digs a little pit and deposits the vole in it and covers that pit with its nose. This is a behavior called food caching, and it's often done by adult foxes when they have excess food. Reading books on tracking can be really helpful, but nothing beats watching an animal make the sign. Here's an example of a dig very similar to the cache that the fox made in the video. Being able to recognize this helps me to read the story even when the fox is gone. And here's another example of an opportunity I had watching an animal make a different kind of sign. This is a fox squirrel in a very urban area of downtown Portland. And here it's climbed into a hazel and it's feeding on beaked hazelnut. And it peels the husk off and then bites big chunks out of the, the nutshell and drops all the pieces to the ground. Here's the evidence it left behind. The real power and magic of tracking is that it brings the landscape alive, no matter where we are, or rather it makes us aware of its aliveness. But of course, this is the briefest of introductions. And if you found this inspiring, please check out more by joining us for a tracking class at Raven's Roots. You can click on the link and go to courses on the Raven's Roots page in the text below this video. And also please support me. I worked hard to write a book on the Tracks and Sign of Reptiles and Amphibians of North America, and you can also purchase a copy through Amazon or your local bookstore. Check that out below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.